Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute treat box that I'm calling the Noble Peacock Treat Box because it features the Noble Peacock Specialty Designer Series Paper. This is a heavier weight designer series paper. I love how sturdy it makes these boxes. And I want to give a shout out for the inspiration to fellow German demonstrators Katja Hamann and Brigitte Keiling. I originally got this idea from Katja. I shared a project like this a while ago. It was a much larger size of this to fit a Reese's peanut butter egg. And recently Brigitte shared her version and it used the So Sentimental bundle. And I just love the shape of this die with this box. So I decided to resize it yet again. And the dimensions of this box the square part of it is two inches by two inches by three quarters of an inch deep. I believe that Ghirardelli squares will fit in this easily, but I don't have any on hand to check. And I just recently on my Facebook Live this week demonstrated making nine of these, and I shared a lot of tips and tricks on how to make multiples. So I'll be sure to include a link in the description below to that Facebook Live if you wanna check it out and see some additional tips and tricks. But let me show you how easy this is to make. We're gonna start with a piece of the Noble Peacock Specialty Designer Series paper. This is the blueberry bushel version of it. And this piece measures four and a half inches by six inches. You can get four of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. On the four and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at half an inch and one and a quarter. And then I'm just gonna rotate it 180 and repeat those score lines. So half inch and one and a quarter. Then I'm gonna rotate this clockwise and we're gonna score this at two inches, two and three quarters, four and three quarters, and five and a half. And then we're gonna do a couple of short score lines. So we're gonna score at two and three eighths, but only down to that first horizontal score line, and five and one eighth down to that first horizontal score line. Then I'm just gonna flip the cardstock and we'll repeat those as well two and three eighths down to the first score line and five and one eighth down to the first score line. Okay, next what we're gonna do is do our diagonal score lines. It's gonna be easier to show you on the template here. So at the bottom of those short score lines, we're gonna score on the diagonal from there down to the next intersection of score lines. And we're gonna do that in each of these little three quarter inch squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now I think you can see those diagonals. Next, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the straight score lines. Okay, so now we're gonna start cutting away a couple of pieces. I'm actually gonna flip this over because it's easier for me to see the score lines this way. Now, what I wanna point out is that this longer two inch section that's the closest to the little half inch and the three quarter inch, we are keeping that tab, but then removing everything else. So the easiest way for me to do that is to cut on either side of that two inch section, and I'm cutting up the vertical score line. So I've come in two vertical score lines, and I'm cutting up one, so to that first horizontal score line. And then I'm gonna come in three vertical score lines and cutting up to that first horizontal score line. And this is the section that we're gonna keep. So I'm gonna remove everything else on either side of it. Like so. Then I'm gonna come in and we're gonna notch this little tab here. You can use the detailed trio punch if you wanna round those corners, but I found that this was quicker and easier. That's just to make sure that it'll be easy to tuck into the box. It will hold itself closed. So we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. So if I were to turn the template upside down, we're gonna come in two vertical score lines. Well, technically three, if you're counting that little short score line we made. And I'm gonna cut up to the first horizontal. Then we're gonna come in to this next vertical score line. And again, this is the tab that we're keeping. It's directly opposite of the other tab. And we'll remove everything else. And then we'll come in again and notch on that tab that we're keeping. And then, I didn't do this on my Facebook Live, but it really does give the box a better finish. It's just to come in on this little half inch section, I'll turn it back this way, here, and notch those in slightly. Then we don't have any paper sticking out where we don't want it to. 
And then finally, before we start to put this together, we're gonna do two more things. I'm gonna come in and punch. Now this is the section here that doesn't have a tab. And I'm using the half inch circle punch. I'm going up about a third of the way into the circle and then I'll punch out a little finger notch there. If you can see that. And we'll repeat that on the opposite side. Now, the last thing we'll do is I'm gonna pinch where those diagonals are. I've got my middle finger and thumb on the back side and my index finger right at the point of that triangle and pinching. And then I'm just gently kind of putting things into place. No need to burnish this. And we'll do that to the rest of those diagonal score lines. Like so. Now our box is ready to put together and all you need is a strip of tear and tape. I'm gonna put that right on this little half inch section here, but I'm putting the tear and tape right up to that score line as opposed to the edge of the paper. I'll show you that up close. So there's our score line and the tear and tape is right up to that score line. I've now switched the attachment to my take your pick tool, then I can come and pull off that backing. And then if there's any tear and tape hanging off the edge, just fold that back onto itself. Now I'm gonna flip it over, fold on the second score line from the left, and the first score line from the right, those should line right up. And now, let me put my template out of the way. Now we can go ahead and close the box. So I like to reinforce those diagonal folds again. And also I kind of bend down this little tab, but ultimately we are gonna tuck that tab into the box and it's gonna hold itself closed. Now as I do that, I'm kind of curving that tab in to try to coerce it to tuck in, and then it will naturally be easier to close after you do it the first time. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm pinching on those diagonal score lines. We'll come in and if you want to, go ahead and dry fit, fold that over before you tuck it in. And again, I'm kind of curving. The key is to get those outside edges. Those are the trick to get in, but if you curve it a little bit in the center, as you do that, it will fit into the box. And look how awesome that is. It holds itself shut. Really sturdy box. I love this and I cannot wait to keep making more and more of them. So let's go ahead and decorate the box. We're gonna be using the So Sentimental Bundle. I love this bundle. It's one of my go-to bundles. We're gonna use the stamp, I can't thank you enough. And then we're gonna pair it with this die from the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And I've already cut out one out of thick Whisper White cardstock. And because I made multiples on my Facebook Live last night, I already have a template set up on my Stamparatus. So I have a blank die cut that I can fit right there in the template. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up with some blueberry bushel ink. And there we go, it's stamped right where we wanted it to go. I'm gonna grab four dimensionals and kind of space them out on the back grab my take your pick tool and then we can get those backings off. Nobody's gonna see the little hole we're putting in those dimensionals, but those come off really easily. And then we can pop this on the front of our box. Now we know it's the front because it's the side that doesn't have the finger notches. Pop that on the front. Then I'm gonna grab a blueberry bushel rhinestone from the Noble Peacock Rhinestones. These are also retiring and are currently available at 20% off. And that finishes off the box. So there we have our Noble Peacock Treat Box, or you can use it for other things like jewelry. This would be a beautiful jewelry box. And I know you'll find so many uses for this sweet little box. It is just a really cool shape. I instantly fell in love with it when I saw Katya's version and then I fell in love with it all over again when I saw Brigitte's version. So I just had to pixify it again, change up the sizes, and I just love it. So thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. And again, I'll include a link to my Facebook Live so you can see my tips and tricks for making multiples. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll get an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle and it's a great way to get your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join 
and I'd love to welcome you to my team of paper pixies. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like a complimentary copy of one of our catalogs, you can order catalogs through me at thepaperpixie.com catalogs. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.